Hey, Precalc, this is factoring day three, and we are already up to a factoring review. So I think it's a nice time to take a step back after the first two days, make sure we're really comfortable with the initial patterns that we've talked about and methods for factoring. Because what we're about to move into is a technique called factoring by grouping, which again, you should be familiar with from last year in Algebra 2. But we definitely extend a lot of these techniques further beyond the level of difficulty that you would have seen last year. So let's make sure we're comfortable with some of these methods. If you want to create a little chart in your notes to get started, we're going to talk about different method names on the left column here, what the pattern is for those, if there is an association for that pattern, and then how many terms to look for, because sometimes that will clue you into which method to choose. But we're going to start with good old GCF, greatest common factor. And the thing about GCF is it's not really super specific in terms of a pattern or number of terms. So if you look at what I wrote for pattern, I wrote, let, let's take out the GCF on the outside. And then on the inside, you're going to have a few terms left over, depending on how many terms there were initially in your polynomial or your expression that you started with. So that's kind of what those dot, dot, dots would represent. But there's not really a great way to write down what the GCF pattern is, per se. But I wrote down that you need two or more terms to work through and use GCF. Sometimes you only have two terms. Sometimes you might have four, five, six terms. It depends on the case. Moving on from there, the next pattern that we talked about on day one was difference of perfect squares. And again, I think this is really a pattern that you're probably very familiar with. Difference of perfect squares, x squared minus y squared would result in the following product, x plus y times x minus y. You're only going to ever have two terms. Uh, two terms if you're looking at the difference of perfect squares. I don't think we did this on that first day of notes, but you might want to make a list for yourself and just make sure you're confident with, I would say, at least the first 10 perfect squares, you know, 1 squared through 10 squared. But even beyond that, you might be familiar with some like 12 squares, 144. And, you know, you're definitely going to want to, I would say, be comfortable recognizing when perfect squares come up. Okay, trinomial I wrote a lot for patterns, and there are not really any specific patterns, they're just names of things that you might have heard me say or other teachers say in the past. I don't know if I use the term unfoil, but sometimes I think of when I multiply two binomials, if you understand or have heard of the term foil, well, factoring a trinomial is really the process of unfoiling. We have the AM technique, that's the same thing as unfoil. You have a trinomial you want to add to the middle and multiply to the end. But if you can't use the AM technique, you might have to use guess and check. You know, remember guess and check is for when you have that lead coefficient in front of X squared, like a 2X squared, a 3X squared. Maybe you call that reverse box method, something like that. SDS, slip, divide, slide, if that's a technique you've been using and you've been getting the, the correct answers when you've checked them, then good for you. Keep using it. There are some, some little uh, things to watch out for with slip, divide, slide of when it doesn't work. I'll reference that today. We've got difference of perfect cubes that we talked about yesterday. So hopefully this pattern is pretty uh, competent for you at this point. Only two terms ever for difference of perfect cubes. And then finally, we also have the sum of perfect cubes that the only major difference is the signs that are in the middle. So I wrote down that quick note there, KCA for the signs, keep, change, add. So if that's something that helps you to remember the pattern, then you're well on your way to having success with factoring perfect cubes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just work quickly through some examples of factoring completely, and then we'll save some other practice for when we're together tomorrow. So let's go ahead and take a look first at these four factoring completely questions. When I see the term factor completely, typically, I would say as a student, you should be clued into the fact that there might be more than one step that's required to factor the expression. So if you take a look at number one, three X squared plus six X plus three, the very first thing I want you to do in factoring completely is always think, is there a GCF? So to factor something completely, this may have looked initially at a first glance at something that you would use reverse box method, slip, divide, slide. But I'll tell you, if there's a GCF that you can take out before you factor, that slip, divide, slide method will not work. So you have to be cautious about that. 
So let's go ahead and take out the GCF because hopefully you see now that there is one a GCF of three. And that leaves you with x squared plus 2x plus 1. And although GCF as a standalone technique sometimes is all that you can do, you really always want to consider with the leftovers there, can you factor that any further? And in this case, there are things that add to 2 and multiply to positive 1. It's going to be x plus 1 and x plus 1. So that is now a completely factored expression. So if you did that initial step of just taking out the GCF on a test or quiz, you're getting partial credit. You know, in this scenario, you're going to want to always double check with what's left over, see if it can be factored any further. I wouldn't care how you wrote your answer. So in terms of if you want to write it as three times the quantity x plus one squared, that would be fine with me as well. All right, moving on to number two, think GCF first. I'm looking at it. I don't see a GCF. One is not a very exciting GCF to take out. So let's move on and take a look at uh, factoring with difference of perfect squares, maybe, is what jumps out to you here. 16 is a perfect square, so is x to the fourth. So the first thing you would do is write this as, if I take the square root of each of these, 4x squared plus 1, and then 4x squared minus 1. So that would be a good initial stage to factor that expression. And typically, once you do difference of perfect squares, I feel like we're pretty confident that we're, we're set. We have something factored. But maybe you're noticing, oh, wait, yeah, that second set of parentheses, that's difference of perfect squares again. So make sure you carry the first set of parentheses down to your final answer. Even though I can't break that down any further, this is one of the factors. 4x squared minus 1 would factor into 2x plus 1 and then 2x minus 1. So that's the complete factorization of what we started with, 16x to the fourth minus 1. Okay. Two more, we've got 2y cubed minus 250. So the first thing I'll do is take out a GCF of 2. Hopefully you notice that right away. 2 goes into 250 125 times. And I really like that that is what I'm left with because I know that 125 is a perfect cube. And of course, y cubed is as well. So if I remember that cubed pattern, make sure you bring the GCF of two down to the next step. You would have y minus five as your binomial. And then the trinomial would be y squared, middle multiply, plus five y, and then at the end, plus 25. So there's your final answer for number three. Finally, number four, there's definitely not a GCF that you can take out. I don't see difference of perfect squares because it's not a binomial. Okay, cubes is sort of out too, right? With all those even powers. Plus again, when you have three terms, it's a trinomial. So the other thing I can do is attempt some trinomial factoring. Now, in terms of the trinomial factoring, we did see one like this on day one where you're actually going to use that add multiply technique even though we have x to the fourth and x squared as your exponents here. The first thing I would do is I would break this down into x squared and x squared because those definitely multiply to x to the fourth and they have to be included in the factors if the middle term is x squared. But now you can think about what adds to negative one multiplies to negative 12. And that's gonna be minus four and then plus three. And we've done well to get this into a factored state, but then once I have that written down, are either of those able to be factored? And the answer is yeah, we can factor x squared minus four. So make sure you continue to break that down to x plus 2 and x minus 2. The x squared plus 3 factor that couldn't be broken down further, make sure you just carry that down to your final answer. And that's actually a really quick day 3 lesson. Like I said, when I see you in class next, we'll do a little bit more practice with factoring completely and then eventually move on and talk about the technique of factoring by grouping. Have a great day.